getting rid of players that are at the top end of the age scale, which Willa Haraki undoubtedly is in that squad, to to replace it with a kind of a group that they can consistently build with for, for four or five years. But then it is a player who's played a you know at the high level for a long time, so you'll miss his leadership a bit. So there's, mm. I don't. I don't know where to, I'm. I'm in the, all the minds that Tom's in. I'm in them as well, I, I tell you. <laughs> not yeah, not quite sure what to make of it, uh, to be honest. But no doubt time will, uh, no doubt time will tell. And as as Tom says, um, you know, we wish him luck with whatever it is he decides he's going to do next. And it sounds like they've re-signed Adam Quinlan, doesn't it? Which probably he's going to be one of their higher-paid players, so they'll yeah. be working that around, and he'll be in that group him and Ben Crooks might be in that group of players in their later 20s that they're looking to build around for a three four year sustained period yeah. and bring yeah. in other players around those kind of guys as the leaders so maybe that's the shift maybe, maybe so yeah. Yeah, um, maybe. finally in Hull KR news they've teamed up with local mental health charity Hull and East Yorkshire Mind to launch a unique charity shirt for the 2020 and 21 season the classic mind squiggle makes up the design and forms a series of robins across the striking design as a nod to the club's long associated nickname. In a first for Hawkins and Rovers charity shirt, the kit, sponsored by Harrison Solway, will be worn across two seasons, so running into 2021. The Yorkshire and Humber areas have some of the highest rates of suicide in the UK. The club are looking to use the partnership to help inform supporters about, uh, supporters about the services available and normalise conversation about mental health so it is more widely discussed and i think uh you know it's it's a pertinent time to make sure people are having these conversations so the shirt being announced now and released now gives that opportunity to put it at the forefront of people's minds so that people do have these conversations with, with everyone to make sure check you know checking on the friends make sure people talk about the problems and help find ways to deal with the problems uh, it's a great charity and uh, and a great initiative by the club. Look, I haven't seen the shirt. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, I I haven't actually seen the um, the final design either, but uh, I'm sure there's lots of lots of whole KR fans will, will get behind that, and it gives them a chance to support the club and support a good cause, um, like you say. Drop into the championship and do a, a whiz through some some news at the at the level below. Okay, so Bradford Bulls have completed the re-signing of Re Sevens for the 2021 season. The international has signed a two-year deal with the club after returning following a pre-season switch to Leeds Rhinos. Uh, Whitehaven have completed the signing of props Andrew Dawson and Dean Zamet. The duo joined Gary Charlton's squad for the 2021 season. 31-year-old Dawson joins from Workington, whilst Zamo Zamet arrives having most recently played for Wigan St. Patrick's. Zamet is a Maltese international and came through the Penrith Panthers junior system before moving to the UK earlier this year. What a time to have jumped out of Australia and into the UK. Yeah, well-timed Zamo. Uh, York forward Tim Spears has signed a new one-year deal. Spears, 36, has made 77 appearances for the club since arriving at the back end of 2016 and reached a career milestone of 400 earlier this year. Uh, Nathan Graham is to become Lee Greenwood's new assistant at Dewsbury for 2021. The club have also confirmed that Chris Anakin will remain at the club for next season. I wonder if uh, Nathan Graham's still having nightmares about Bobby Golding dropping bombs on his head in the Challenge Cup <laughs> final. Uh, Brad have confirmed the permanent signing of Adam Rooks from Hull KR for the 2021 season becoming the club's 18th player to sign on for next year Dewsbury have announced re-signing of centre Jason Walton for the 2021 season with the club already confirming their squad numbers as well so Dewsbury are well ahead of the game Betty has returned to Oldham nine years after first featuring for the club, signing on a two-year deal from 2020. Uh, Surely that should say 2021, whatever I've copied and pasted Uh, from there. It almost certainly should, shouldn't it? Yeah, Yeah, a few other lines on the Championship before we drop into League One. Australian hooker Connor Jones is to leave Challenge Cup finalist Salford at the end of the season to return to 
uh, Featherstone, where he enjoyed a strong campaign in 2019. Batley have signed goal-kicking halfback Joe Sanderson from Hunslet ahead of 2021. Uh, the former Leeds Academy player scored more than 500 points in 56 games for the Parksiders. Halifax duo Scott Grigg, Scott Griggs and Oliver Waite have signed new deals with the club. Island International Griggs, 36, will enter his third year. <laughs> that was a good one. Good third year of his uh, second spell with Halifax. Meanwhile, back rower Waite, who's only 19, has represented England at youth level. Very good. And then dropping down to uh, uh, the lower league, uh, West Wales Raiders have announced the signing of Marcus Webb. For the 2021 season, Webb has previously featured for Hunslet and Swindon. Uh, Barrow have re-signed Danny Morrow on a one-year deal, having originally signed him from Walney Amateur Rugby League Club. Doncaster have signed Huddersfield Giants Academy product Ross Whitmore on a one-year deal. Oh, I'm glad you've got the next one. Oh, Keithley have been busy. Um, they've announced <laughs> their retention list for 2021. <laughs> Dalton, Desmond Walker, Kyle Keswick and Dan Parker have all signed until the end of 2022. Moagora, Jordan Aitchinson, Jack Coventry, Spencer Darley, Dan Hawksworth, Aaron Levy, Jack Miller, Jason Maranka, Taylor Prell, Alfie Seeley, Ben Stead, Jake Webster, uh, possibly those two headline in this group, Billy Gaylor and Ryan Wright have all signed for the 2021 season. Matthew Bailey, Will Cook, Macaulay Hallett, Ben Hardcastle, Richie Hawkyard, um, Stephen Hayes, Louis Sheriff and Lewis Ray will all leave the club, while Matt Wellham has been released from the final year of his contract too and joins Coventry for 2021. Some, um, Some notable big names, names in there. Yeah, yeah notable yeah, names who right. played at a higher level there for on yeah. the mar- back on the market at League One level. On the market. Ashley James Bateman, any relation? I don't know. Has signed a new deal with the West Wales Raiders for the 2021 League One season. Um, Ashley Bateman. Mm. So I don't know where the James has suddenly popped from, but Ashley Bateman's no relation to John Bateman. He's played for wow. Wales for years and years, though. Um, yeah. Ashley Bateman. Uh, Doncaster have announced the resign of 29-year-old Russ Spears for the. 2021 season. He's made more than 160 appearances already during his time with the Dons. North Wales Crusaders have re-signed Ryan Millington for the 2021 League One campaign. The 33-year-old is currently in his third spell with the Crusaders, having rejoined the club ahead of the 2020 campaign. And then a few more stories to report from League One. Of course, with a nod to Love Rugby League, who are fantastic at reporting all the goings on at the Championship and League One level. Um, they added in that Doncaster halfback, halfback Ben Howe has signed a new one year deal for 2021. Uh, Hunslet have announced three more of their squad members for next year. They've signed back rower or centre Brad Hay from Championship Side York, central winger Will Cook from Keefley, and Liam Copland has agreed a new one year deal with the club as well. West Wales have signed army prop Alex Hicken. It's much better easier to pronounce than the army wingers that they signed so <laughs> I'm happy with that um, they've also announced that Daffid Phillips has signed a new deal with the club as well and Workington have announced three more members of their squad for next season and beyond Trop, uh, Trop, Prop Tom Kerwin has committed for next year while Alex Young and Brian Mar- Blaine Marwood sorry, have signed two year deals Brian um... Marwood was like some former sports minister or something, wasn't he? I think he was, actually. Yeah, I think he was. I don't remember more. Uh, and finally, comedian Adam Hills has gone from being a trailblazing physical disability rugby league player uh, and comedian, obviously, major benefactor for the sport. The Australian TV personality and British TV personality, is the highest profile player to lace up his boots for a game of PDRL. He introduced himself to the sport by throwing an interception pass that resulted in the first try being scored in the English game, before eventually going on to conquer the world with Warrington Wolves, uh, the only Wolves to con- conquer the world. Uh, now, with all the, uh, all the competitions on hold because of the uh, pandemic, uh, and the financial fallout hitting rugby league hard in the UK, he's donated money to all five PDRL clubs uh, with a sense of parental pride, it says here. I feel very responsible for it, almost like a parent, as I was there when it came into the world, he told <laughs> BBC Sport. I just want to give it the best start it can possibly have. I, I believe in the sport of PDRL so much. I've loved it. 
have been completely life-changing for me, and I know it has been for my teammates and for all the other people who play it. D.A. Rold has given profits from his documentary, Take His Legs, which charts the game's inception in the Northern Hemisphere and Warrington Wolves' journey to claiming the World Club Challenge trophy in Australia to the charitable arm of the Cheshire Club, as well as Leeds Rhinos, Wakeful Trinity, Castleford Tigers and Wigan Warriors. Uh, as a project that Hills initially self-funded, he was keen to put money back into the sport after, after its success on Channel 4 and its export to Australia. Hills said he always intended to share takings from the show, adding that it was the best time for the money to be made available. Uh, while competition has been put on hold this year, there are plans to relaunch in the coming months, with hopes also how the sport will be included in the 2021 Rugby League World Cup. That's a, a heartwarming story, and uh, I do find Adam Hills very funny, but he's also clearly a, a top bloke. Yeah, and he absolutely loves rugby league, and we don't, you know, there's not that many personalities on television who have popular shows that absolutely <coughs> wear their love of rugby league as a badge of pride, and, and Adam Hills does that, and then, then some more, I would say. Um, Indeed. The he's also been announced, hasn't he, today actually as one of as a as signed on as an ambassador for the Rugby League World Cup, and obviously within that he'll be lodging his uh, interest for for some sort of PDRL version to get played in, in there yeah. at the same time, which you know would be fantastic to make that tournament even more wide ranging and inclusive than it already is. Um, I would suggest it's probably be at some sort of PDRL exhibitions within the other events that are already planned possibly. I, d I don't know but that seems more realistic now with everything else already in place but it it's more positivity isn't it? It's a great, it's a great and finally this one. You know, it, it really good. makes you feel heart warm doesn't it that there's people with the interest, good, the positive interest of our sport at heart and they're not really just doing it for kind of um like just their own clubs or, or whatever he's, he's spread it out across the board and it's good to see some of the charitable foundations of some of the clubs starting to get there and the community foundations of some of the clubs getting their activities are building back up which is, is is hugely important for things like the PDRL part of the game yeah no I I totally agree with that uh, it's a, a good story to finish on uh, much better than the story of the, op the, the that we opened with on the uh, on the news section that's right yeah it was a a, se a serious news section with not much room for, for comedy, comedy but um, Adam Hills surely brings some of that to our sport uh, credit Love Rugby League Total RL and BBC Rugby League for their reporting that we mostly copy and paste for, for much of what we've just told to you and given our opinions on thanks to Tom for getting his news views in make sure you look out for uh, the Google form to put your fan views in if you go to superleaguepod.com you'll see a link on there to the form and you can tell us about any new story that you want us to see because I'd not even heard that um, the the story about uh, well hierarchy but Tom Andrews commented on it so I had to go and find it so if you want to make sure we talk about your team in the news find a news story send us a comment on the news Google form and then I'll have to go and report on that news story <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for that, Tom. Right, we're, we're now going to jump into Super League match reviews, where it was round fourteen for most sides. Right, it's into Super League match reviews. There was five round fourteen games to talk about, and one round who knows game to talk about. <laughs> Um, but that's part of the fun, isn't it, this year? Uh, but it's our first time talking about six games since in, in one run of fixtures since March. So that's a positive. Uh, and we're going to start off with uh, a game at Salford, a kind of dress rehearsal, if you will, um, for the cup semi-final that we'll talk about later. Do you want to take us through the first game? Yes, I'll do that. Uh, so it's uh, finished Salford 20, Warrington, uh, Young Warrington 18. Uh, it was six points to 18 at half time um, in favour of the Wolves. The referee were the, was Scott Mickey Mouse. Um, and uh, the teams, uh, young wire, the Young Wire side made four more breaks and had a better average gain, but did make two more errors. 
and saw Salford make more offloads and over 200 more metres as they ended up with more ball. Salford also had the advantage in tackle uh, success rate. Um, individuals uh, for uh, 